Hello Copic Craft fans, this is Michelle Houghton here with Copic in the Craft Room. We are going to be looking at another type of hairstyle today, um, one that is looks like dreadlocks. This is another image from DanaClarkColors.com. They have a group of free color book pages and I have created them in a size that I feel like will work for um, kind of more of a standard stamp size image. They are beautiful images. Um, they are free to print off for yourself. So if you're interested in those, that's where you can find those. DanaClarkColors.com um, But we're going to be doing her hair and um, looking at it, I'm going to use a series of E7s or the E70s to do that. And I wanted to show you a little bit larger example. This I, the tips I'm using to color this, I got from the um, Copic color guide that is on faces and hair. And this is one of the images that kind of partners with that book with faces and hair. And it's a beautiful image. It's obviously a lot larger than what I normally color. It's an eight and a half by 11. Um, but a really neat image. I love how the skin tone turned out. It has obviously so much more space than what I'm used to. So you end up with a lot of space to play with a lot of layering. And then the dreadlocks, which I did in a really light gray. So it's a person who has old, um, an older person who has lighter hair. Um, but you can see some of that texture and the layering of those dreadlocks. And so we're going to be doing that same effect on this smaller image. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I will zoom in so you can see a little bit closer and I will, as usual, voice over and speed up a little bit. So remember on YouTube, you can slow these back down if you need to do that. Obviously the voiceover will sound a little strange, but um, speed wise, if that's helpful, you can do that on that. Um, there's a button to push to slow those back down. Um, because this technique is actually very fast, I was able to keep the speed of this video a little bit slower, so it's closer to real time than most of our videos. Um, I'm starting with an E70 and basing the hair color on that. Um, this will be a lighter hair color. It's not going to get super dark, and as much as anything, that's so you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. Um, I had a concern about the fact that it was not very realistic looking and I do apologize for that. Um, just showing a variety of hair colors and um, I certainly can go for more realism if people are wanting that as well. Just trying to give you some options. So the dreadlocks, um, we're going to base it in a, ba in a solid color just to get, um, you're not necessarily going to see a whole lot of shine so you're not going to have a bright white highlight. So this is a hairstyle that even if I was doing in lighter colors, I probably wouldn't leave a white highlight unless I was truly going for like that old man's hair that um, was gray to white. Zoom in a little closer, get you guys so you can see what I'm doing as I start adding the shading. E71 is next. I'm literally just going to go through the 7s, E7. So E71, and I've picked a light source off to that left side again. That tends to be my go-to light source, but what I'm doing is I'm literally going to treat each piece of hair or um, kind of chunk of hair individually. I literally go down and I flick or kind of scribble along the darker side. Now that one that I just hit is kind of tucked in behind some of the others. So I did more dark on that one across the top of her head. Again, I'm doing in individually, looking for places where it looks like they're tucked behind others and adding that shading a little bit heavier there. But the bottom edges kind of on those um, rows that are going across the top of her head. That section that's now hanging behind her shoulder against her neck is gonna get darker. So those I filled in mostly completely and that outer one gets again the shadow along that right edge. E74 is next. I'm going right into those same areas. This is not, it's really just a loose scribble that's going right against that line um, because there's texture there in those dreadlocks and so I'm trying to show that a little bit with my shading. Um, again, noticed at the bottom of that one because it's tucked behind the others, it stays very dark. But you can already see what's happening that they're looking a little bit more like individual pieces. 
kind of separating those out. The E7s are not a super um, huge range of colors, but it is a, a nice um, set of earth tones. Coming down that far side, again, this side will be darker just by nature because of it sitting behind her shoulder, away from the light source, down by her neck. Those areas always stay darker anyway. And then I'm going in and adding a little bit of color in that scalp area that we can still see. Usually, again, I would start with her skin and that area would have that skin color and then the hair on top. E77 is my last... Um, or E77 is my last group in this range. I don't have, I'm not using another at the E79, which I could have and probably would have gotten it to a better place, but at least you, now you can still see all these levels of shading. Much more minimal on this color, really hitting those areas where I think it's going to be the darkest. It'll come in around this, this second side a little bit more because I still want the side to look considerably darker up against her neck. And that's it. And it really is just as simple as that. It's that layering of color. I don't have to do any blending. It's a really simple hairstyle style to color and yet it's very effective, shows a lot of dimension. Thanks for joining me this week. I hope you have a happy, colorful week.